What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to create our own customized newsfeed in Python. So how we can take multiple news sources, for example, financial news sources and aggregate them into a customized feed that we can then search and filter locally. So let us get right into it. Now, in order for you guys to have a motivational preview up front of what we're going to end up with here, this is the final result. This is the RSS feed aggregator or the news source aggregator, whatever you want to call it. And the basic idea is we combine multiple news sources. We have here the Wall Street Journal, we have Yahoo Finance, we have Hacker News, we also have CNBC, and we have all these financial articles. I can click through them here and I can also click on them so I can visit the actual articles here or the actual resources, whatever they are and I can also filter them. So for example, I can say NVIDIA search, and then I will get all the articles containing NVIDIA in their title. So this is what we're going to build today and this is fully customizable. You can add as many sources as you want to, you can add whatever sources you want and you can easily just filter and look through these articles here. All right, so let's get started with the coding. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the dependencies. We're going to need two external Python packages in this video today. One is going to be Flask because we're going to build a Flask application. The second one is going to be Feed Parser because we're going to parse multiple RSS feeds from different news sources. So I'm gonna open up a command line and I'm gonna say either pip or pip3 install Flask and Feed Parser. And once you have these two packages installed, you can create a new Python file called appy. This is going to be our Flask application. So here I'm going to start by saying from Flask import Flask with a capital F. This is going to be our application instance. We also want to import render templates so that we can render HTML files. And we also want to import requests so that we can handle URL parameters for searching and for the pages, for example. Um, and I also want to import, of course, feed parser. Now, what you're going to need for this video today is you're going to need a couple of RSS feed URLs. So an RSS feed is basically a collection of articles in a certain format, and you have to specify the URL of an RSS feed so that you can parse it with feed parser. In this case, I'm going to use Yahoo Finance, Hacker News, Wall Street Journal, and uh, CNBC. So very financial and technology focused, but you can use literally any blog, any news site, anything that contains or that offers an RSS feed. So the only thing you need is an RSS feed URL. Just uh, go to Google and type some name of a news source or of a blog or something and then RSS and you will see if they offer an RSS feed. And then you can just add it to your dictionary. So we're going to start here by saying app equals flask and I'm going to pass underscore underscore name underscore underscore and then we're going to define our dictionary containing the RSS feed. So I'm going to say RSS feeds is equal to a dictionary and in this dictionary I want to have um, some name for the news source for example Yahoo Finance and then this is going to be the key for the URL of the Yahoo Finance RSS feed. Now, I do already have this uh, prepared here. I don't want to now type all these manually, so I'm going to just copy paste them here. Um, this is my dictionary. So what you can see here is I have Yahoo Finance is finance.yahoo.com slash news slash RSS index. Hacker News is newsycombinator.com slash RSS feed. Uh, Wall Street Journal is feeds.a.dj.com slash RSS and so on dot XML and CNBC is this one. And again, the only thing you need to do is you need to provide the name as the key and the URL as the value and you find all these URLs by just Googling by going to the websites and uh, checking if they have an RSS feed. So our goal now is going to be to parse all of these to collect them and then to allow for searching or filtering. So we're going to say here, first of all, I want to have an app route, which is the default route. So just slash and this is going to be the index function. Um, now, what I want to do here is I want to get all the articles from the feeds. I want to sort them by date and I want to display them. I want to display them with pages. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say articles is going to be an empty list in the beginning and then I want to iterate over the feeds. So I want to say for source and um, feed in RSS feeds dot items. What I want to do is I want to load the feed, I want to parse the feed with the feed parser package. And um, I'm going to do this by saying parsed feed is equal to feed parser dot parse. 
the feet and then we're going to add uh, or we're going to say the entry. So the individual articles entries is going to be equal to a list when we're going to have a tuple source and entry. The reason I want to do that like this is because I want to display for each entry for each article that I see in my aggregated news feed. I want to specify where it is from. So I want to say this is from Yahoo Finance. This is from Hacker News. This is from CNBC and so on. Uh, because of that, I always have the source also as part of the entry. So it's going to be source entry for entry in parsed feed dot entries. So again, this parses the whole feed, it returns a bunch of articles, all these entries are here, and we want to go through all the entries and combine them with the source in a tuple here. And this is going to be our entries list. And what we're going to do is we're going to say articles dot extend the entries list. So it's basically taking the content of the entries list and adding it to the articles list, appending it to the articles list. Uh, then I want to sort the articles by date. So I'm going to say articles is going to be equal to sorted articles. And as a criterion here as a key, I'm going to use a lambda expression where I get um, where I get the individual entries. So the tuples source and entry and what I want to do is I want to sort by uh, the published date. So I take the index one. So the second element of the tuple, so the entry. And from this element, what I do is I get the published parsed field. Now, not every RSS feed will have this field. If yours doesn't have it, maybe you have to do some uh, if else statement, like if it contains that, then sort it like this. If it doesn't contain that, use a different keyword, or maybe you want to rename them or something like that. But most of the feeds should contain this field published parsed. Um, and we want to do reverse true. So we want to have the newest first. All right, so we have the articles now. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to split them into pages. So we want to say that 10 articles per page uh, is what we want to see. And then we want to have a next and a previous button. So what we're going to do is we're going to say page is equal to request dot args dot get so page is going to be passed in the URL. So we're going to have a form, uh, or we're going to have the buttons, the buttons are going to redirect us to page one, two, three, and so on. And we want to get the page uh, parameter from the URL argument. So we're going to say page, the default here, if we don't get any argument is going to be one. So we want to be at page one, if we don't provide a page. Uh, and the type of this is going to be an integer. So it's going to be typecasted automatically. Now per page, I want to have 10 articles, you can adjust this if you want to. But let's say we want to have 10 articles per page. And the total number of articles, total articles is going to be equal to length of articles. And then in order to define the range, we need to say, okay, start and end of the articles is going to be how many articles do we have per page? what page are we at, that is going to be the start point. So the start is going to be equal to page, uh, page minus one, actually, because the first one should start at zero. So if we have page one, we want to have zero. If we have page two, we want to have uh, one times the number of per page. So we want to start at 10. So it's going to be page minus one times per page. And end is going to be start plus per page. And then we're going to select we're going to say paginated or paginated articles are going to be equal to articles start end. Now did I import something? Yeah, I don't want to do this. Um, so this is how we do that with uh, we select the range based on the page. And then what we do is we return render template. And now we're going to render an HTML file that doesn't exist yet index.html. And I'm going to tell you right away here, I'm going to write all of this or I wrote all of this myself, but uh, the CSS file is going to be completely copy pasted from uh, from ChatGPT. So the styling in the end is going to be completely uh, ChatGPT made because there's nothing I hate more than designing pages with CSS. This is really not my thing. Um, which is probably why I'm going to share this code in GitHub, if I don't forget it, because then you can just copy paste the CSS as well. So articles is going to be equal to pa uh, paginated paginated, I'm not sure how this is pronounced. I'm going to just say uh, paginated articles. Um, and then we're going to say page is equal to page. Total pages is going to be equal to total articles floor divided by uh, per page, and we're going to add plus one. And 
then this is basically it. So this is how we how we return all the articles. Now we want to have a different endpoint for searching. We want to have an app dot route. Let me just add a, a couple of lines here. We want to have an app route, which we're going to call slash search. And it's going to be also a function search. And here what we want to do is we want to provide a query and this query, we just want to see if it's part of the title of an article. And if yes, the article is going to be displayed. So the query is going to be equal to request arguments get Q for query uh, articles is going to be basically I think we can copy most of this. So we're going to say for source feed in RSS feeds. We're going to do the same thing articles is going to be an empty list, then we're going to extend it with the entries. And now we just want to say results is going to be equal to article for article. in articles, if whatever the query is in lowercase, so case insensitive, if that is part of the article one, because we want to have the entry, so not the source, the entry, if the title contains this. So we do both dot lower so that we have it case insensitive. And if the query occurs in the title of the entry, then we keep it. And all we have to do now is we have to say return render template uh, search results.html, which is another HTML file that we don't have yet. And here we're going to say articles is equal to results. And query is equal to query because we want to also display what we searched for. Uh, and then finally, what we need to do is we're going to say if name equals main, run the app debug equals true. All right. So that is the Python code. The rest is going to be just HTML. So and of course, CSS. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say um, templates is going to be a new directory in this templates directory, I'm going to have uh, three HTML files, base HTML, uh, index HTML, and search results. HTML. All right, so for the base HTML, this is just going to be the basic uh, template here. So we're going to say here that this is the RSS, or let's say news hub, this sounds better news hub. Um, and what we're going to do here is we're going to have a header. This header is going to contain a heading RSS aggregator aggregator. I'm double checking the code on my second screen all the time because I want to end up with the exact same thing that I showed you in the preview. Um, the action of the form is we're going to uh, pass or we're going to do a get request to the search. So we're going to have a simple form where I can enter a keyword and then we want to do a get request. So usually we do form action something and then method post. Now we're going to do method get, we're going to say the action is URL for search. And um, the method is equal to get. And then in here, we're going to have an input type text, the name is going to be Q. So this is going to be our query and the placeholder is going to be search for a keyword. And then we're going to say input type submit value search. So that is our uh, base HTML file. So this is going to be part of both sides. So even if we have already searched, or even if we're just listing all the articles, this is going to be in the header, and then we want to have uh, the body and here we're going to use the templating then so we're going to say, uh, actually, I do have the body. Oh, this is already the body. I'm stupid. Uh, so after the header, we just want to have the block called content. And we want to end the block here. And this block will then be filled by index and uh, search results. So what we're going to do here now is I'm going to replace all of this, I'm going to say in the beginning here, that I want to extend the base HTML file. So I'm going to inherit from it, so to say, 
and I want to fill the following block here, block content. And now here we want to display the contents that we got from the endpoint here. So we return render template index HTML, we get the articles, the page and the total pages. So this is what we're doing here. Uh, this is what we're getting here, what we need to display here. So for styling reasons, I'm going to use a couple of um, diff tags here. These were all added by uh, so all these these classes here were added by ChatGPT for the styling, but the structure is actually uh, the important thing. So if you want to have just the functions, you don't need any classes here, you don't need any um, fancy styling, you just need the components with the IDs and names, and that's it. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say class articles. And in here, I'm going to say, iterate over the article. So for article in articles, what I want to do is First of all, let's close this with an end for uh, what I want to do here is I want to display an article tag. And in this article tag, I want to have a heading, the heading is going to contain a link with uh, the reference to and now I use a placeholder article. And I want to have the article URL. So from the entry, I don't get just the title and uh, the published date and so on. I also get the link to the article. So I can go to the entry dot link attribute. And the text of that will be the title. So I'm gonna use your article one. So the entry again, title, this one remember is because we have a tuple of source and entry, we don't want to have the source we want to have the entry. And from the entry we want to have the title and the link. Um, below that we want to have uh, the date, the publishing date. So I'm going to say article one published. And finally, we want to have article zero actually, which is going to be the source. So article zero is the first element of the tuple. And this is going to be the source. So that is the display of the different articles. What we also need to implement now is the uh, pagination or pagination, we need to display the pages at the bottom. So diff class is going to be equal to uh, this word that I don't know how to pronounce. And then we're going to say here, if page is greater than one, we want to also display a previous button. Um, then we also want to have end if so that is going to be for the previous button. And then we also want to make sure that we don't have a next button if we are already at the last page. So if page is less than total pages, only then we want to display uh, a next button. Alright, so if the page is larger than one, we say a href is equal to URL for we want to go to the index endpoint, but we want to uh, pass page equals the current page minus one. Um, and the text is going to be previous. And that's basically it. And then here we want to do the same thing, but we want to do it with next and with plus one. All right, so that is our index page. Now for the search results, uh, what we want to do is we want to also extend from the base template. So I'm going to actually uh, copy this. And uh, now what we want to change here is we want to say at the top uh, heading two, we want to say here search results for and we want to provide the query so that we know what we searched for. And then we want to list the article. So we want to say for class articles, uh, or diff class articles for article in articles, and the rest should actually stay the same. And we don't need a pagination here. So that should be it. If I didn't forget anything that should already work. So let's see, probably there's going to be an error message as always. Let's open this. Maybe not. And there you go. So without the styling, it seems to work. We have here now all the articles, um, I can click on next, and I will get different articles, I can now see previous, I can go next, next, I can go previous as well. And um, I can search for Nvidia, for example. 
And this is going to give me the Nvidia articles from the different sources. Okay, this looks awesome. Now, the only thing that we're going to do now is we're going to add styling. As I said, I'm going to just copy paste this, I really, really don't care about um, implementing the styling. So I'm just going to copy paste here from my style CSS path uh, or file. Uh, I'm going to create a directory here called static. And here now I'm going to create a style CSS file. Uh, style.css. Again, this is copy pasted from chat GPT. So all this here is not written by me, I wouldn't have the patience for that. The only thing we need to do now here is we need to include it in the head. So link rel equals style sheet. And um, we need to specify the source here as URL for static, so the static directory, and the file name is going to be style.css. And then we just close this, I think this should work. Um, let me just indent this with, I think it uses two spaces. There you go. And now let's run the application again. And this time, hopefully it looks better. So I'm going to open this. And there you go, we have the styling from before. Now, this actually is I think the button doesn't look properly because I used input instead of button and in the styling it uses actually button. So let's go with button type submit. And then just add search in here. And then let's go again. There you go. Okay, so now we have exactly what we saw in the preview, we have our financial news hub or our customized news hub or our RSS feed aggregator. And this is how you can build that in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you for watching. See you in the next video and bye.